Okay, let me get my feet planted. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to back up. I can see. So thank you for the pause and the break. And I apologize for my light speed presentation before. I'm going to back up a couple slides in the presentation just to uh, highlight a couple things that I brushed over. So as a reminder, this is item 20, <clears throat> uh, an action item to adopt the 2020 shop. This slide uh, just highlights the government code, which shows that the commission has a responsibility not only to adopt the shop, but before we adopt it to review the shop. And in these bullets here are in the government code. It says we're supposed to review it relative to its overall adequacy and consistency with the asset management plan, the review it um, relative to the funding priorities established in the section 167 of the Streets and Highways Code, the relative to the level of annual funding needed to implement the program, <clears throat> and the impact of those expenditures on the state transportation improvement program. So this presentation hopefully will highlight that we've done that sort of oversight review and feel comfortable adopting. So go ahead and go to the next slide. This is, again, photo credit to Mike Johnson, but it's in here because uh, the way we structured our review was sort of in three parts, and it was sort of a zoom out, zoom in, zoom in. And the, and the first, it was sort of, so the way I look at it is we reviewed the process, <clears throat> we reviewed the program, and then we reviewed the individual projects. And that was the way that we sort of encompassed the full, full picture of a review. So the process is this, Thank you, Mike, for the slide. I I like this slide because it helped me connect the dots of how the asset management plan is directly connected to the shop that, that has been adopted. And so what it also highlights uh, for us as a commission is go ahead and click the first one. The, the, these are the documents that come before the commission. The asset management plan is actually approved by the commission. And then the next one, the State Highway System Management Plan, that gets reviewed by the commission when that thing comes around. And then the 2020 shop, as we're seeing right now, that gets adopted by the commission. And finally, the benchmark report, that's, what's, that's what Mike is gonna bring in June. And that kind of completes it. So this process, uh, and understanding this process, I think helps us know that this 2020 shop does fit into to a bigger, um, framework that I think is well planned out. Okay, so next we go to the program review. And this is where we're looking at the overall program going, are they focusing on the priorities that they should be focusing on based on law, uh, statute, and um, targets that have been set? So we look at revenue assumptions. Are they, is it constrained to the level of funding that we see in the fund estimate? <clears throat> um, are they focused? Is there a heavy focus on the four primary assets while also not forgetting about the supplementary assets? And we recognize that is a, a tough balance that the department has to face. And so we look at that uh, and the primary assets, we're kind of evaluating that against the 10 year targets and where we need to be. The, we look a little bit at the reservations, the, there's a safety reservation, uh, a major damage reservation, a minor reservation. and this year they're proposing the complete streets reservation. So we just look at those to go, are those, you know, about what we would expect them to be? We look at it from like a program level, was there stakeholder input to the projects you're selecting and all that type of thing. So just to highlight real quick, one of them, go to the next slide, uh, the four primary assets. So this is our way of going, do we feel like the focus is where the focus should be? And these are snippets from the first 30, 40, 50 pages, whatever the, the literature part of the 2020 shop. And these are directly out of the shop that was submitted to the commission in January. So we look at the pie chart and go, this, this look is based on number of projects. And when you see that, that green circle, that's my green circle. Um, but I, that's why I, I wanted to draw our attention to 73% of the number of projects are pavement, bridge, culvert, and TMS, which are our four primary asset classes. So the number of projects focuses on those. The, then we look over to the next chart to the right. Those are, again, my green work. There's some dollar values on there. And, and this shows not number of projects, but it shows dollar value of projects. And 
is our is our money focusing on the four primary assets? And these numbers are going to look a little different than Mike's numbers. I just want to address that. He, uh, it's it's just a different look of the same uh, of the same thing. He's his probably I think he's included contingency projects. This does not include or contingency the unprogrammed dollar amount on contingency projects where we're just um, this chart just focuses on the project development dollars. So anyway, what this shows us at a higher level is, yes, a lot of the dollars is going to the four asset classes. And then in the bottom right, those are the outputs, which were also in Mike's presentation. And that's the type of thing we're looking at going, are we getting a lot for the money we're putting in? Okay, go ahead, Brandy. So then we zoom down. So that was kind of the program level review. Then we zoom down into the project level review. And man, we asked a lot of questions back and forth to Caltrans and they were very responsive. We So we look at things like, are these are the individual projects, are they shop eligible? We, we flipped through all the projects. Is there complete streets included where they should be? We looked at the design build in the CMGC project. That's the construction manager, general contractor. Uh, the financial contribution only projects we're looking at, long lead projects, contingency projects. We sort of, sometimes we focused on the large dollar projects or the ones that had like a high amount of right away. We looked at whether the support costs were appropriate. Um, pavement projects where some of the improvements are improving good pavement. And so we'll ask them questions and, and figure out, you know, is there a good reason for that in operational projects? So. The next slide, so there's, I think what this is supposed to communicate is there's a lot of different things that we're checking. One of the things is support costs. And one of, an example of what we did was we said, okay, let's just kind of graph capital costs compared to support costs. And commissioners, as you have probably seen, uh, it's, it's, it varies a lot project by project and that's to be expected. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with it varying project by project. It's not a straight line. However, what we wanted to do was when we saw some of the ones that were more outliers, uh, it's an opportunity for us just to ask and, and to see if uh, what they're doing makes sense and if they've looked at it. And so this gives an example of that red circled one is one that we thought, man, that's a little bit of a higher support cost compared to all its friends. And so we, we would pose a question to Caltrans, why is this so high? And then you see the answer, the italics down at the bottom is what they told us. This 10 mile project involves the replacement of pavement and a heavily congested freeway corridor, which requires complex traffic handling during construction. The scope involves other assets, including drainage system restoration, bridge rehabilitation, sign panel structure upgrades, traffic management system up improvements, ADA infrastructure, a lot more than maybe just uh, another roadway rehabilitation project that might not have all that. So it's that type of interaction and explanation that makes us as staff comfortable going, okay, that makes sense that it might be a little more expensive for this one. Okay, hit the next slide. There it is. Okay, so here's kind of, this is their, our conclusion slide in this. So after doing the process review, program level review, project level review, we go, what did we find? Number one, and this is the reason I put this one first, is we did find that it's a good, it's a systematically developed document, it's consistent with the TAMP, has a heavy focus on the four primary asset classes. Um, I think we can say that even more confidently now after looking at it for the many months than we even, than we did before. Number two, this is related to the complete streets reservation and I'm gonna pause halfway through this one. Staff supports the concept of a $100 million complete streets reservation, but uh, I'm gonna pause, that's a big but right there. So I'm just gonna pause real quick. What, what I wanna say from commission staff perspective on this is we are very supportive of including complete streets improvements into transportation projects. And we think it is appropriate to do so and we like that, that Caltrans has a policy to do that. What, what we hope as a commission to see, and I believe the plan from what I've heard from Caltrans going forward, is that the complete streets improvement would be built into the projects from the earliest planning phase with input from the stakeholders. And 
a reservation would not be needed in the future because of the stakeholder engagement early on and how they're built in and it and then it can kind of flow through just like all the rest of the projects do through the asset management process and all that so our hope for future cycles is that we don't need a reservation because we have gotten the improvements in early on for this cycle we are supportive of the $100 million Complete Streets Reservation. The, so now the but, so, so we're supportive of the reservation, but notes that only $42 million in compensating programming changes have been proposed as of today. So that's part two is, and Mike alluded to this, or Mike mentioned this directly, there are seven permanent restoration projects that Caltrans is propo proposing to make programming changes to either in the form of uh, deleting the projects or delaying the projects and those seven pro of those seven projects only three of them have come in so far and they came to this May meeting and the other four are proposed to come to the June meeting and so those three uh, total programming changes of 42 million dollars and uh, we were um, we were hoping that all that all the 100 million would come into the May meeting but Unfortunately, we found that only 42 million came to this meeting. So the third bullet, so just remember that bullet because I, our recommendation will touch on that again. The third bullet, I just want to say, this is our final conclusion. Caltrans welcomed our questions, which, strode, which showed strong partnership and confidence in their document. We had over 100 questions that they specifically responded to in writing, and I'm sure we had more verbally. We, we peppered them with a lot of questions, and they were really great partners. So. It was a good review process for us. And um, that said, I, I am ready to move into the recommendation. Terry, do you want, do you have any words you want to say on our review before I make our recommendation? Yes, John, thank you. Commissioners, I just have a few comments about the 2020 shop. Um, thanks to the SB1, this is the largest proposed shop that's ever been brought before you. It's also the first shop, as Mike mentioned, to fully incorporate an asset management approach to the selection of projects. And I just want to acknowledge the hard work of, of John Prey and Chris Johnson in reviewing this program of over 900 projects. Staff has probably performed the most rigorous review of this shop than any prior document. Um, and we also want to recognize that on the other side of that rigorous review has been hardworking, responsive staff at Caltrans. Specifically, we want to call out Donna Berry and the programming staff and Mike Johnson and his asset management team. They've, <laughs> over the last few months, have provided us with um, lots of project details and program overview that's assisted in our review. So, John, back to you. I was on mute. Okay. So, I, I, I am also thankful to all of them. Um, it was a great partnership. So let me go to, so hit the next slide. Before I make my recommendation, I just want to be really clear on what the final shop document is that you commissioners are voting to adopt. There was the 2020 shop that was submitted to the commission uh, in January. And that's what you see on the left side of the slide, the proposed 2020 shop. Since January, that top arrow represents shop amendments that Commission has taken action on at the January meeting and at the March meeting and at the May meeting. Those are amendments to the 2018 shop, but those will be those changes will be included in the final 2020 shop. And additionally, tab 19, which was the information item right before this, had a change list that went with it. And that change list was provided as a yellow supplemental item, and then it was modified as a pink it was provided as a pink replacement item uh, and what it was doing what that change list has is it notes uh, various changes that did not come as amendments that are being included in the final shop document so the final document will include the january plus the amendments and changes and plus that tab 19 change list that's where we get our final document it'll be posted on the commission's website after adoption so hit the next slide and Here's our recommendation. Okay, I'm going to read this slow because it's a little wordy at first. Because the 2020 shop is required to be fiscally constrained to the level of funding defined, defined in the 2020 fund estimate, 
and only $42 million in compensating programming changes have been proposed as of today. Staff recommends the commission adopt the 2020 shop as proposed with the following modification. Change the proposed complete streets reservation from $100 million to $42 million. When Caltrans brings the remaining programming changes to a future commission meeting, the commission will have the opportunity to amend the remaining $58 million into the complete streets reservation at that time. So, Chair, that's our recommendation with, with that modification, and I'll turn it back over to you. Thank this you. This is Carl. Um, I think, oh, go ahead, Carl. Oh, no, Mr. Chair, after you, sir. I was going to make a make a motion and a comment, but I'll wait for you, sir. Yep, go ahead. Nope, that's it. Great. Go ahead. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Chairman. And this is Commissioner Gordino. I'd like to uh, move the, the uh, shop with staff's recommendations and noting for this commissioner that I'm eager to see uh, the future programming to get all the way up to 100 million. But that, the last part is an editorial comment, uh, but I, I make the motion with staff's recommendations. This is Commissioner Inman, I'll second that. Uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Gardino and a second by Inman. Uh, I have questions that are uh, have been raised, so I'm going to start with Commissioner Liu. I got my questions answered under the previous item. Oh, okay, great. Um, uh, do we have any public comment at this time? Okay, we have public comment, so I'll let staff take over. Janetta Giovinco of Richards, Watson, and Gershon. On behalf of Mr. John Dan Hackle, in connection with White Squirrel Farm, located in Albion, Mendocino County, we request that the CTC take no action on and continue Caltrans' request to include in the shop funding for a significant and complex project, Salmon Creek, Salmon Creek Bridge, uh, number 10-0134. Information related to this item was added at the last minute, and critical documents still remain unavailable for public review in connection with Caltrans' request including items listed as attachments to the Caltrans Supplemental PSR 4140 Final Version 2. Absent these documents, we cannot fully analyze Caltrans requests. In addition, to the extent that Caltrans requests involve CTC federal funds, there is no evidence of compliance with the requirement that the California Coastal Commission concurs that the activity conforms with the CZMA. Please continue this specific request. Thank you. Okay, um, do we have other, we, we have some comments, okay. Okay, Chair, uh, I'm so, I apologize. Uh, Director Omashakin, you are now unmuted. Is that for, for me, Tokes Omashakin? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, I, I just want to make some comments br briefly as uh, you look to take a vote on this uh, proposal that's on the floor right now. Uh, a, a few quick things to sort of piggyback on and mention that have already been mentioned already before we take this, uh, before we take this vote. One, um, the, the pandemic that we're currently going through. Um, You've heard repeatedly from our, our partners and stakeholders um, that are out there working with communities about what they're seeing, the, the increase in uh, bicycle and pedestrian utilization of, of our transportation system. The fact that more people are out there right now today using, uh, using a system. Uh, we know what the safety implications of um, uh, of in making investments in the bicycle and pedestrian space are. Today, uh, nearly three out of 10 people who die on the transportation network are the most vulnerable users of the system, the people that this funding would, would go to support. Uh, beyond safety, which is again, our most important responsibility, all of us, uh, next is the is uh, environment and climate goals that we are trying to uh, all collectively address uh, the, the fact that we need to start to see a push, uh, uh, an, an increased push, I should say, uh, on addressing GHG issues, uh, greenhouse gas issues uh, across the state. 
Um, and the economic impact we know uh, we have when we make the these types of investments uh, in active in active transportation. Uh, and and finally, the transportation and mobility uh, needs that we have uh, across the the board, and what these investments, what impact these investments have on mobility and transportation. Uh, for us as a state, so I, I understand the the technicality that's being moved here, uh, that's being pushed forward here. Uh, I, I don't agree with uh, using that technical uh, approach to hold back us doing this. Um, I, as you heard, uh, more than a hundred questions were levied to us um, at Caltrans and our staff worked very hard uh, to uh, people like Michael Johnson and, and Donna who were mentioned, uh, uh, two of many who worked very hard on this issue, uh, addressed many questions across the board uh, on this. Or, uh, and so I think we should move forward. And here's what I would propose. I would propose that we, uh, uh, that you, uh, the commission, approve the full $100 million request, the full $100 million Caltrans request, contingent upon us bringing back uh, the remaining projects that would need to be augmented uh, in the June meeting. Uh, so move forward with the full request now and say, look, when you bring back uh, the remaining projects that will need some augmentation at the next meeting in June, uh, we will uh, we will finalize this, but right now we're we're approving uh, this uh, this request. So that's that's what I would propose. Uh, again, this is something that I think we need to show leadership on as a body of transportation entities, and, and do it now, uh, and not uh, keep keep uh, sort of uh, pushing the ball back uh, on this, uh, if you will. So thank you, uh, Chairman, for uh, allowing me to provide additional comment on this uh, on this important issue. Uh, I'll call on Director Weiss to. Sure. Uh, thank you for those comments. Um, I would just like to say that uh, a couple of things. On the heels of uh, the presentation showing a $1.5 billion shortfall in transportation funding, I'm not sure I would call maintaining financial constraints a technicality. That said, um, we are supportive of increasing the reservation should there be offsetting deletions from the shop, which there was an opportunity to include here and we haven't received them yet. Um, you know, the, the complete streets, including complete streets components has been a Caltrans policy for some years. And as we talked about earlier, as we talked about earlier, the, this is really a one-time reservation and, and indicative of the fact that this policy was not being adequately carried out at the you know at the level where projects are developed um, I think that we need to be financially constrained consistent with the funding level identified in the fund estimate that was recommended by Caltrans and approved by the Commission and as I said we'll be able to increase the reservation once offsetting deletions are proposed Okay, at this point, I will call on uh, Vice Chair Norton. Uh, thank you. I, I did want to just ask, because we were going to be going out and um, going out to the public and talking about the need for um, complete streets and our goals to identify $100 million in projects, I just wanted to, given that um, Director Omashakin is trying to identify additional funds and and willing to come back in June. I just was wondering, uh, and I, I take your point, Mitch, that uh, Director Weiss, that, that we had the opportunity to get those projects already, but this is something that people have been looking forward to for a great long time. And because we need to be giving these constrained localities time to be aware of the, the funding and and the goals to make this a, a possibility um, for additional support in a, in a tight year um, where complete streets projects are being asked for over and over again. I'm wondering whether we could 
because it's only one month, whether we could support Director Omashakin's uh, motion and at least start letting the public know that there's a goal of getting to $100 million for complete streets to give everyone time to prepare budgets accordingly and prepare their own applications as they also try to apply for other SB1 projects. Okay, I will call on Commissioner Inman. Um, well, just one technical point, and it goes to uh, John's presentation. I might have an old printer, but my uh, revisions aren't coming in yellow and pink. So I think for the record, we should maybe uh, refer to revision date so that everybody is uh, clear when we um, make those referrals. But to the um, motion, a question, is, is there a hybrid between the motion and what Tokes has suggested, Director Amashakan has suggested, pardon me, um, in terms of allowing everybody to continue the momentum and do the work that needs to be done? So I'm kind of looking for uh, I'll, Is there I'll, a way? I'll, I don't I'll know exactly it. what I'll, will happen in six weeks. To Commissioner me. Inman, let me have uh, uh, Director Weiss respond to you. I would say that there needs to be something deleted to free up the 58 million. If the department wanted to propose another project deleted from the shop, I mean, there's 900 projects. There must be something that they're they're willing to delete now and have us not recommend it, and they can amend it back in at, at the time when they free up other other funding. So that would allow us to be financially constrained. I, here's the, the director of Mashakan. I'm I'm empathetic to your 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 plea. However, I'm I'm concerned that you know um, this is one again once one of those things that we started late in the this process got delayed, and I and I I recognize all the reasons why the process got delayed. Um, this was the first time that we were using the asset management to develop the the shop and and i want to affirm that that was a very difficult process i also want to affirm that um that caltrans staff was very responsive to the questions of ctc staff uh i also want to affirm that i met with advocates uh in 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 um february and march and they were still trying to get get um, the the process of how to include complete streets into the 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 shop was still opaque at that time. And so, from their standpoint, it was hard for them to get um, uh, whatever the process was. It wasn't engaging the stakeholders early enough to get um, to get uh, project specific um, uh, complete streets included. Um, and I, I believe I want to just support one more time that it, uh, st Cal CTC staff has been asking for Caltrans to identify uh, projects to be deleted so that the, the shop is fiscally constrained, consistent with policy. I, I, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm kind of, um, I think we all want to stay consistent with policy. I, I don't hear anyone arguing that we don't want to be consistent with policy. And so if someone's arguing that we that they want to be inconsistent with either policy or the law, uh, I would like them to make that argument. But um, I, I, I think what, what, we've, what staff, CTC staff is, is recommending here is a, a step where we've clearly identified what we want to do, which is the 100 million. We just want Caltrans to come back and say, here's how we're going to do it and we'll stay within policy and the law. So direct, I, I just would ask Director Omashakin or, or your team, um, are you asking us to do something? You're asking us to kind of go out there and get outside of policy. And I don't, I don't understand how, how you want us to do that and still feel comfortable that we're, what, that we're staying within the boundaries. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Chairman, for uh, allowing this discussion on this important issue to uh, to to continue. Uh, again, 
uh, to me, and and somebody can show me or explain to me otherwise. This is a technicality that we're uh, so we're sort of going back uh, and forth over. Now, uh, what I have put on the floor and, and, and requested here is that we uh, that the CTC, the commission. Uh, approve the $100 million uh, request contingent upon projects uh, for the rest of the $58 million be identified uh, in June. So a, a resolution of sorts right now. Um, you know, this is something, again, I, I think I, I don't want to, you know, keep hammering away at this or beating the dead horse there, if you will. This is something we need to, to show uh, our uh, community stakeholders today that we're ready to take action on. And I get the fact that um, fiscal constraint uh, plans and, and adoptions are important. I completely get that. that. I'm not arguing that point about what law or what policy says. Uh, what I'm asking us to do today, uh, I'm imploring us to do, is to uh, just show leadership on the issue and say, look, we approve uh, the $100 million request contingent upon in June, you identifying the rest of the $58 million worth of projects. And one more thing, I, I think important to know, Director Weiss mentioned the $1.5 billion that our CFO mentioned uh, as impact from COVID. Uh, this $100 million is not, uh, is not uh, new money that we're going to pull, uh, you know, that we're going to, uh, that we're requesting. This is not new money, if you will. So uh, the $1.5 billion issue is, um, is not really uh, of, uh, of impact to this because, because what we are doing is saying we're augmenting projects that are not ready to move in this current shop that, are, that will be in subsequent shops and taking uh, some funding from those projects to move forward on complete streets projects that can be completed in this current shop. So this is not like we're requesting or taking new money from somewhere that will somehow uh, uh, impact that $1.5 um, billion uh, shortfall that we are projected to have. And I completely understand that. Uh, we will be keeping a, an eye on that um, from here because it's gonna, it's definitely gonna uh, impact how we do business. Uh, but this, these projects are a part of our transportation system um, and we just need to show leadership on this issue now and not keep saying, oh, next meeting, next meeting. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to come in. If we want to have a little bit more discussion on this, there are people like Michael Johnson, who's led us on this, uh, and Jeannie ward -Warla and Mike Kiever, who may want to provide some comments as well. But for now, um, I, I will hand this back over to you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, <clears throat> well, one of the options we can do right now is, uh, is identify a project for deletion and, 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 and do what you're asking us to do, but as a commission go out and say, okay, we're gonna cut uh, another project and, and, and then stay within the fiscal constraint and take and do what, I, I think Director of Meshach and we are trying to find a path that would, would, leave, would, would empower your staff to, to do the own deletions, but I'm concerned um, that uh, yeah, the, com the commission's going to do what the commission's going to do. But I I'm concerned that you, you put us. We we I felt like we have a path to say, look, we're in favor of the hundred million dollars. We're identifying forty-two today. Six weeks from now, we can do the other, um, the remaining fifty-eight. And be and and have it done, and we and to your point, we are we are making a leadership statement on the hundred million dollars. Um, but if you want the hundred million dollars today, for us to stay with consistent with policy and the law, we're going to have to make an, an additional cut. Is my I'm going to get I will get a staff uh, input on that before I you know that before we go down that road. But I believe that we are required to do that. Uh uh, Mitch, Chairman. can you clarify that? Uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman? We're required to be financially constrained. Um, and there are a number of projects that, that could be uh, deleted. Uh, one of them could be uh, 04-01128, which is a program for 63.6 million of construction in 22-23. 
uh, we could delete that project and when the department uh, you know, could uh, bring it back when they had other offsetting things that they want to delete in June. Delete construction for that project. Okay. Uh, I have Commissioner Inman, Alvarado, and Burke who want to speak. So let me start with Commissioner Inman. I already spoke. Thank you, Paul. Okay, Commissioner Alvarado. I think we're pretty clear that, that we're willing to, to commit the $100 million, But I agree with the chair. You know, we need, to, we need to stay within the lines on this one. And there's some, there's some controversial stuff coming down here and... and as long as we stay within the lines, I think we're going to be fine. We're, we've got a June meeting, which is not very far away. And those projects can come back. And, and, we, and we do the amendment and approve the rest of the money. But I, I would feel uncomfortable going outside of the lines on this one. Okay. Commissioner Burke. Uh, I have uh, really some concern. Uh, if we uh, only approve a portion of the hundred million, whether or not uh, after the May revise come in, if there is uh, any attempt to remove some funds that are uncommitted uh, that in various programs, and that's happened before. I mean, I know you remember that. Uh, and it takes a long time. Some in some instances, I guess it was like years before we restored it. And under ordinary circumstances, I would say absolutely approve what we have right now and then put over later to approve those projects that have not been completely put placed before us in an acceptable manner. Under these circumstances, knowing we're really on very shaky ground in terms of what's going to happen after those may realize or come in tomorrow or some of it coming in today, I guess, if we can't word this in such a way that we say that we are committed to the hundred million, but we are continuing any designation of that uh, 58 million to June, over to June, so that we give the impression that we have made a commitment of funds in the event Finance decides they want to come in, huge deficit, trying, they're going to try to find every penny that they can get to, to, to make up for this huge deficit we're facing. So if there's some way we could word this so that our hands are already around the hundred million and it would be very difficult for it to be removed, uh, I'd like to get someone's uh, analysis of that. Mitch, can you comment on that, please? So I'm, I, I, I was trying to deal with text messages. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll just so so, uh, Commissioner Burke. My understanding is that the well, I'll I'll, I'll turn it to uh, uh, um, uh, Terry Anderson to answer that question. Yeah, and distinguish it from what happened in two thousand eight or ten. Yeah. Okay. I'll have okay. Terry Anderson answer your question. And I don't know that I can address the 2010 scenario, but um, I guess what I would say is if there is a May revise and, and we are looking at some reduced revenues, which would impact, if, if there's a point where it impacts the shop, um, everything's going to be on the table and there won't be anything sacred about a $100 million reservation or $42 million reservation that's set aside for complete streets. Because at that point, the department's gonna have to look at all projects and all priorities um, and make some tough decisions. So I don't know if that answers okay. uh, Commissioner Burke's question. I, well, and I guess- I, you, you do realize, I guess, that there is a possibility that we yes. may- Yes, but I don't think, I don't think having this, having this reservation won't won't it doesn't make this this money whatever amount it is sacred it it would also need to be looked at in terms of the priorities of what needs to be accomplished through the shop and i think at that point we would be looking back to statute which does define certain priorities within the shop uh yeah i i assume so yeah uh, what i have uh 
really keep going back to again and again is how these funds, and I realize there's been an amendment to the Constitution that says you can't do some of the things in taking some of the money that's been committed, but also their emergency powers that we've been listening to lately. So I think that we need to be careful about that. And if we're willing to say that we'll take a chance in June that we will still have available these funds, uh, that's, I think that's the chance we take. If there's some way we could avoid it, I would hope we could. Well, and just for clarity, the what we're, we're not talking about um, more or less money being committed to the shop. What we're really talking about is there was an amount that was um, approved through the STIP fund estimate for the shop for the next four years. And so it was up to the department to evaluate how they were, were going to um, develop a program of projects to fit within that, that balance. So the, the money won't change. What we're looking at here today is that the department would put in front of you a proposal to approve a shop that is not consistent with those that funding level. And the way they want to get to that funding level is through actions that would occur at the June meeting. And I think the point of staff would be that this has been a very long process, John laid out for you, the long process that we've gone through to try to really be able to present to the commission our recommendation in terms of, yes, this is consistent and you should be adopting this shop. And, and this concept about the reservation came in very late in this process. And so we've worked quite a bit with the department, but again, some of the things that were sent to us, even as, as um, on, on this last Friday, so, so merely, you know, less than a week ago, um, led us to believe that that really what we're looking at is only a 42 million dollar reservation that would be um possible within the fund balance all right i'll uh, call on Here. commissioner gardino and then commissioner kehoe i'll get uh, oh yes commissioner kehoe i'm sorry you hadn't got it before commissioner gardino okay. go ahead commissioner kehoe thank you um just uh very good points by Commissioner Burke, and um, and uh, Terry's response was excellent too. I we are in uh, you know very difficult circumstances. The governor is exercising uh, emergency powers on a daily basis. Um, I would I always prefer sticking with the plan that has been worked out with our partners and staff, uh, but I I realize that. Uh, Commissioner Burke has a, a good point that things could change in the next 30 days. And um, uh, uh, and Terry replied by saying uh, uh, excess funds or unallocated funds or unprogrammed funds uh, may very well be swept up. It, it has happened before, despite um, assurances that things are in the proper lock boxes. Uh, what uh, I, I'm open to some flexibility on the dollar amount, but I don't want to uh, balance that change in the dollar amount by um, deleting projects even temporarily. Uh, we have done that in the past at the commission and it's resulted in a lot of uh, local confusion and frustration and um, tensions with the commission. I don't think we should do that on the fly. So I won't be supporting Deleting, deleting projects as part of this discussion. I just want to make that clear. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Gardino. Mr. Chairman, thank you. And I'm going to build on Commissioner Kehoe's comments. As the maker of the motion, I had mentioned the motion, as well as my own view that I hoped that we would be able to uh, find that extra 58 million, uh, but I expressly didn't make it part of the motion as I have a high level of discomfort of us trying to make cuts from the dais as that's not as thorough as and as thoughtful as I know that both Caltrans and the California Transportation Commission and our stakeholders prefer us to be. For that reason, I think it would be very, um, I don't think it would be prudent to try to make cuts from the dais. I'd rather 
uh, have time for us to have our Caltrans team and our CTC team uh, to look at this revenue constrained list and come back with where we could thoughtfully find that 58 million together rather than moving um, without warning in advance right now on the dais. So I'd like to keep my motion as it is. Thank you, Commissioner Gardino. Uh, Commissioner Inman. Um, well, I was the second on the motion and I think we're very clear in our commitment to find the 100 million. Um, can we read the words back maybe on that? Uh, could we go back to um, the last slide in the previous PowerPoint? So the, uh, is that on your screen? Yes, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything but further, I, Commissioner Inman? What we were saying was that we, we do appreciate the desire to find the the resources. So I don't know if we carefully made it in the motion. It's not that we aren't supportive of the. I think I think Commissioner Gardino's uh, motion was pretty clear of the support for the hundred million. Okay. May, um, may okay. I make no, no, no. We we have an order. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Commissioner Alvarado, Lou, and then Burke. If, if just using my evil mind here, um, if you guys are worried about this, if I really wanted to take the money, what I would say was, ordinarily, I couldn't. We couldn't go in and do um, take this money, um, but since you did it wrong, since you you went with the 100 million instead of the 42 and you did it wrong i'm just going to take it all i think if you go outside the lines on this one you're jeopardizing not only that 58 million but the 42 that we're that we're trying to get through today i think we have a pretty firm commitment on 100 million dollars but to stay within the lines we approve the 42 when they bring back the other 58 we approve it, and we and we move right along. I, I think you're setting your I think you're setting yourself up here. You're 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 trying to protect something, and you're and you're putting everything on the line, because that's what I would do if I wanted to take the money. I would say ordinarily, you know, you you there may not be uh, the 58 million that you're talking about. It may not be there, but the fifth the 42 is protected. But if you go outside the line. You, I'll take the whole thing because you did it wrong. Commissioner Liu. Okay, well, I'll just start by saying I've been on this commission for just under four months and um, I've been waiting for this kind of a conversation. I'm so glad we're having it. Uh, it's really great to have this exchange with everybody and uh, to hear everyone's opinion about an important item like this. It's very encouraging to me that uh, we do have, I, I believe, unanimous support among the commissioners for um, investing in complete streets and getting the complete $100 million to this program when it is consistent with the legal restraints that we operate under. And uh, I'm a stickler for the law. If it says that the program has to be fiscally constrained, I think it has to be fiscally constrained. Uh, at the same time, I will uh, continue to fight like crazy to make sure that that full hundred million dollars is invested and reserved for um, these projects. So uh, I, I think we're, I'm ready to move forward with the staff's recommendation and the motion on the table um, with a clear message to everyone that we're going to support Caltrans and its effort to identify where the other $58 million comes from and to adopt and incorporate that at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Burke. Well, uh, if it's very clear that we will, in 30 days, 
make a review of the uh, projects that come forward and that meet the criteria, uh, you know, I understand it and I would certainly go along with it. I'm nervous. I'll have to tell you, I'm very nervous about this. But it, it could be worded that we approved 42 million and we continue the remaining 58 to June for us to reconsider it. I would feel very comfortable with that. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have some some public comment? Mike Johnson, you are now unmuted. Uh, thank you, Commission. Uh, I appreciate the lively discussion. Um, hope, hopefully I can offer a pathway out of uh, the situation we're in. A um, couple of things. First and foremost, to go down there, and beat the hell out of them. Um, first and foremost, the projects are are not uh, to be determined. They are already in tab nineteen of the commission's package. So there, the additional projects that uh, that the department needs to bring forward are are already identified. It, they're simply lacking uh, at this point the commission action. Uh, to change the programming. That's what the department's proposing in June. So we're not trying to find the projects. They're already in front of you. And then uh, I guess with that caveat and, and another reminder, I guess, that the the reservation itself and the, the entire shop will not be effective until July 1. So in effect, it's the department cannot utilize this reservation until that time anyway. So I, I think that we could go forward with a contingent action uh, with a surety that, that there's no opportunity to utilize those funds until July anyway. Um, so just a, a pathway maybe to, you know, to give the commission an opportunity to not be outside of the fiscal constraint and still move forward with the full reservation. May, may I just make one fast comment? Jonathan, oh. Um, Jonathan Matz, uh, you are now unmuted. Oh, thank you. I believe one of the commissioners just had a comment. I would not want to speak ahead of one of the commissioners. No, go right ahead. Okay. Um, thanks. I So this is Jonathan Mass from the Fresh Partnership. I feel in a little bit of a, a bind, as uh, I spoke earlier, we've um, been in, in enthusiastic support of $100 million, and it's still a little bit unclear to me substantively what the difference would be between the, the two options uh, being put forward. Um, so I feel a little bit hesitant to make recommendations about fiscally constraining funds and, and the like. Um, I'll just reemphasize how key we think it is for the commission to uh, make clear at this moment uh, its prioritization of complete streets, not just as a matter of, of policy and prioritization uh, for the long-term trend of, of our transportation funding, but, but as I mentioned earlier about um, really providing relief as soon as possible to uh, communities that are struggling really with any way of of uh, enjoying any outdoor physical activities uh, as possible with um, with park and trail closures um, still in, in effect in, in many places. Um, so whichever way the commission can see to it to um, to fully endorse the, the full, uh, reserve that's being put forward by Caltrans um, at this meeting, it would um, it would be uh, greatly appreciated to the cities. Thank you, Jonathan. Alinka? Okay. Commissioner Burke. <clears throat> well, I, I would just like to see if there's some wording that we could have where we have some assurance that in June we'll be able to consider the remainder of this $58 million. Uh, could the, could the Commissioner staff Burke, Commissioner, Commissioner, Burke, Commissioner Burke, we have put the um as Ms. as mike johnson has identified they have they have outlined some some uh, 
some projects that they want to uh, look at. Um, and if they, and, and with those were in tab 19, if they do that uh, at our June meeting, deprogram de those projects, then, then we can reprogram the 58 million. It's, the ball's really in Caltrans's court to do this. Um, so I, uh, they, 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 they could have done that before this meeting. They've chosen not to do that before this meeting, but they have the, they have complete control to do that and still allow us to be f fiscally constrained. Uh, I will now call on commissioner Norton. Commissioner Norton. Yes, I just had to unmute myself. I had a question of Director Omashakin that if we, we still have a lot of um, time in this meeting, um, and I was wondering if we tabled this item and took it back up later in the meeting, as you've had Director Weiss and you have yourself with items that you have in tab 19 that you say could, could be part of the conversation um, for the 58 million, it's not necessarily on the fly, but I am moved by the idea of that the May revise might put things in jeopardy. Is it possible to table this now and have you and Director Weiss um, discuss this while we move on to the other items we have so that we could end this meeting potentially with those $58 million in projects identified? I'll let uh, Director Weiss respond. Um, I, if if uh, Caltrans would, would like to do that, I, I'd be happy to figure out where the heck they're sitting and uh, go down and, and uh, have a conversation with them and see if we can get to a different place. I'd like to call. All right. I there is a motion on the floor. Right. Uh, we need to call a question. Okay. There's, there's a motion to table. Is there a second? I don't hear a second. So there's, is there a second? No, no, no. I'm on the motion to table, Doug. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I don't hear a motion to second on the table. Joe Lou, I'll second. With no motion. Okay. There's a motion on, on the table for, for, there's a motion and a second to table. So now we are voting on whether to table item 20. Doug, please call the roll. Commissioner Alvarado? No. Commissioner Burke? Aye. Commissioner Dunn? No. Commissioner Gordino? No. Commissioner Hinman? No. Commissioner Kehoe? No. Commissioner Liu? Aye. Commissioner Norton? Aye. Commissioner Pavoloni? Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Van Kenanberg. No. No. Go ahead, Commissioner Tavoloni. No. Chair, the motion has failed. Okay, the motion has failed, and we now have called the question on the motion to uh, to adopt the 2020 State Highway Operation and Protection Program as made by Carl Gardino and seconded by Fran Inman. Uh, Doug, please call the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Aye. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Aye. Terry Aye. Chair, the motion Thank you. Item 21, Terry. Commissioners, item number 21 is an informational item presenting draft amendments to the shop guidelines. For the shop guidelines, the commission may amend the adopted shop guidelines after first giving notice of the proposed amendment and conduct, conducting at least one public hearing. A webinar is scheduled for May 28th, 2020 to provide an opportunity for stakeholder input. It is anticipated that the final shop guidelines will be 
will be brought forward at the June 2020 commission meeting for a public hearing and for the commission to consider adopting. I will note that that webinar, May 28th, um, one topic will be specific to shop guidelines and our second topic will um, focus on complete streets and start some conversation about how an asset management approach to complete streets might look. Um, and this was an information item only. Do we have any questions for uh, Terry on item 21? Seeing none, we'll now move to item 22, uh, which is the safe vehicle rule and Tanisha. Thank you. And I know I've asked Jennifer Gress to raise her hand in the queue so if staff could unmute her as well because she's going to present after myself. I appreciate it. Thank you. So item 22 is an information only item. Staff has invited Jennifer Gress Chief of the California Air Resources Board Sustainable Transportation and Communities Division to provide an update on the status of safe rule part two. Uh, part two of the rule, as we heard from Vince Romano, was published April 30th and becomes effective June 29th. Based on Vince's update, there should be no impacts to transportation conformity from safe rule part two. This means transportation projects may proceed through the normal planning and programming processes without issue. This includes the adoption of new plans. Additional coordination between Caltrans and project sponsors may be required for a select subset of transportation projects as they work through the NEPA and CEQA phases of work, and we've collaborated with the project sponsors on that already. And with that, here is Jennifer Gress of the California Air Resources Board. Thank you, Tanisha. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. It's a pleasure to speak with you today. Uh, Vince Mamano and Tanisha both did in fact steal my thunder earlier, but I am happy to elaborate uh, on their comments about the safe rule. As you have heard, the Trump administration published the safe rule part two on April 30th. Effective on June 29th, this rule rolls back federal greenhouse gas emissions and corporate average fuel economy or CAFE standards for passenger cars and light trucks. You might recall that the safe Rule Part 1, finalized last November, preempted California's passenger vehicle, greenhouse gas, and zero emission vehicle standards. The combined effects of these rules will have significant air quality impacts on California that will impact the ability of the state to meet national ambient air quality standards and make it difficult for some regions to meet conformity requirements. As you know, we previously considered the impacts of safe rule Part 1 on transportation conformity CARB published an EPA-approved adjustment factors to MFAC to address criteria pollutant impacts of Part 1. Um, now that Part 2 has been released, CARB has evaluated it and determined that adjustment factors to MFAC that have already been issued and approved continue to be valid and should be used for purposes of transportation conformity. Although SAFE Part 2 will increase upstream criteria pollutant emissions, and this is a serious problem we will need to deal with, these upstream, upstream emissions do not directly implicate transportation conformity, and EPA has stated that MFAC 2017 and 2014 remain approved. Accordingly, at this time, additional adjustment factors for criteria pollutants are not needed beyond those already released for purposes of transportation conformity. <laughs> Separately, CARB will be developing adjustment factors for greenhouse gases, and this may have implications for some programs that rely on MFAC for estimating GHG emissions. Although I do want to note that the GHG adjustment factors um, that we will be developing will not be applicable to the SB375 program, as we have a separate version of MFAC uh, for use there. Um, so there are no impacts to the SB375 program and the evaluation of sustainable community strategies. We in, uh, anticipate publishing MFAC adjustment factors for GHG emissions by the time the rule is effective, which will be June 29th, 2020. With regard to litigation, litigation continues on Safe Rule Part 1. Merits briefs are likely to be filed sometime this summer. The state has not yet sued on Safe Part 2, but we certainly intend to do so, and the deadline to sue, to sue is the end of May. Uh, and that concludes my update on the Safe Rule. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for uh, Jennifer Gress or Tanisha Taylor? I don't see any. Thank you very much for your report. Item 23. Commissioners, item number 23 is an action item requesting approval of an amended 25-year lease between the North Coast Railroad Authority 
also known as NCRA, and the City of Ukiah. Government Code Section 93020 requires commission approval for any sale, easement, or lease entered into by NCRA after August 1, 2018. The City of Ukiah seeks to designate the trail, including the entire rail corridor that parallels it, as a municipal park to more effectively protect, maintain, and enforce the trail area. This is an amendment to an existing lease and does not affect any other portion of the existing agreement. Staff has reviewed the proposed lease and recommends commission approval. This is Commissioner Alvarado. I'd like to make a motion to adopt staff recommendation. This is Commissioner Guardino. I second the motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Alvarado and a second by Commissioner Guardino. Is there any public comment? We do have public comment. The City of Ukiah appreciates the work of Commission staff and the Commission's consideration of Item 23. Thank you, City Manager Sage Sanjicomo. Thank you. Any other comments? I'll call the question. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Mr. Gardino. Aye. Mr. Inman. Aye. Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Mr. Liu. Aye. Mr. Norton. Aye. Mr. Cavalloni. Aye. Mr. Aye. All right, we'll now move to the information calendar. Uh, Terry Anderson will lead us through the information calendar. Thank you, Chair. Commissioners, the next 11 items, number 24 through 34, are informational items deemed by staff not to raise any issues, and therefore individual items will not be presented unless specifically requested by a commissioner. And please note that there was one change to item number 26 that was noted on the change list. Thank you. Um, we'll now move to the consent calendar, and I am pulling uh, uh, tab 43. Uh, Commissioner Inman, will you please explain your recusal from tab 43? I wish to recuse myself from this item because my employer, Majestic Realty, has, proxim has owns property in close proximity to the Otay Mesa project. Thank you. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Terry Anderson, will you please now present the consent calendar? All right. Commissioners, there's 13 items on the consent calendar, um, 35 through 48, minus item number 43. Please note that the following changes to the consent calendar items um, occurred as documented on the change list. Item number 35, there are technical changes to the wording in the book item. Item number 40 listed 49 uncontested resolutions of necessity. 16 of those were withdrawn prior to the CTC meeting, and one of the uncontested um, RONs also had an additional page that was added to, I believe, pink handouts um, that were sent to the commissioners. Um, and with those changes, commission staff recommends that the commission approve the items on the consent calendar. Commissioner Dunn moves staff's recommendation. Second by Kehoe. All right. Well, I have a motion by Commissioner Dunn and a second by Commissioner Kehoe. Can I get some clarification? Sure. Uh, I think the motion should probably be items 35 through uh, 48 with the exception of 43, or are we doing all of them at once? I think we no, we're not 40. doing 43. We're doing 35 to 48. Uh, we're doing... 48 with with but not 43 we'll come back and do 43 in a second here want to make sure the motion uh, included that yep. yes okay doug please call the roll mr alvarado yes mr burke aye mr dunn aye mr gordino Mr. Hinman. Aye. She's recused. No, no you're recused. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sorry. I'm I'm already got myself. Oh, sorry. Commissioner Kehoe. 
Kehoe, aye. Mr. Liu. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Tavaloni. Aye. Aye. Okay. Now your the, your chair, who's getting foggy, will do this correctly. Uh, okay. Now, yeah, you're recusing as as you've stated before on 43. And so now, uh, Teresa, will you please present item 43? Yes, commissioners. Item 43 is an action item. This is an allocation amendment to revise the budget year from fiscal year 1819 to 1920 for two locally administered projects funded from the Federal Coordinated Border Infrastructure Program in San Diego. This is just to correct the budget year. Staff recommends your approval. Commissioner Dunn moves approval of staff recommendation. Second. Commissioner I have a Norton. Motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Dunn and a second by Commissioner Norton. Uh, Doug, please call the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Kehoe, aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Tavaloni. Aye. Commissioner Kennebert. Aye. Chair of the motion is approved. Thank you. Item 49. Harry. Sure. Commissioners. Um, I'm going to present items 49, 50, 51, and 52 individually, and then at the very end, I will um, ask for, um, I will recommend, make a recommendation for all four of those. So let me walk through each one first, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Um, item 49 is an action item requesting an initial construction allocation of 4027000 for construction capital which is an amount that exceeds the programmed amount by more than 20%, and a request for 998,000 for construction support. The primary reason for an increase to the construction capital estimate is additional work needed to replace the open concrete ditch system with a closed culvert drainage system that was determined to be needed during design. The cost of the design changes will add significant value and safety measures to the project. Item 50 is an action item requesting an initial construction allocation of 1,717,000, and that amount exceeds the programmed amount by more than 20%. Additionally, the request is for 700,000 for construction support, and the primary reason for the increase on this project is due to changes made to the type and quantity of guardrail for this safety project. Item 51 is a request for supplemental funding to complete the design phase for this project. This is a project that had ps &E allocated in August of 2018, and the department is requesting supplemental funds in the amount of 300,000 to complete the um, design phase. The support cost increase accounts for additional partnering that occurred between Caltrans and the local agency and the design of additional work um, including some pedestrian features on this project. Uh, and item number 52 is a request for supplemental funds to complete construction on a project that will stabilize two active slide areas above State Route 101 at locations adjacent to the Russian River in Mendocino County. The original project contract was awarded for uh, just under 13 million in construction capital and Caltrans is requesting uh, supplemental funds of $4 million for construction capital and 503000 in construction support to complete construction. Um, staff has reviewed all four of these projects and all four requests and recommends commission approval on items 49, 50, 51, and 52. Okay, do I have a motion? And then I will have some, I do have some comments. Okay. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, I make a motion to approve uh, staff's recommendation. Okay. Dunn seconds. seconds. Okay, whoever. All right, I have a motion by Tavaloni and a second by Dunn, and I will now call on Commissioner Liu. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to speak to item 52 it seems like this is one of those projects where anything that could go wrong has gone wrong 
And so now we're being asked to approve an additional $4 million in funding uh, for the uh, complete to complete repairs on Highway 101 in Mendocino County. Now, I, I don't necessarily oppose this, but from the report that we received, it's unclear to me whether the added cost resulted from decisions that in hindsight would have been better and not as costly if sequenced differently. And it's also not clear if those sequencing decisions were directed by Caltrans or made by the contractor. And in the case that they were made by the contractor, perhaps you know um, they should be on the hook for it, not us. So I would just like to get some clarification as to what happened here. Sure, and those okay. are really good questions. We do have Richard Mullen from District One on the line to um, answer those questions. Yes, hi, Commissioner Lee. This is Richard Mullen, Deputy Director, Caltrans. And we also have on the line uh, Tom Ostrom from Structures. But to answer your question, the um when we went into construction that going into that construction season in 16 17 winter it was a declared a uh, storm event the slide accelerated more than what had been uh, originally moving um and then we took another look our geotech took another look at it and noticed that we needed to do a take control the sequencing to make sure that they weren't going to, they being the contractor, to leave a wall partially constructed and have some roadway failures. Up above on the roadway surface, we have a four lane freeway that had having suffering some significant upheaving going on. We had some safety elements related to that. We had a, a fatal and another car, another uh, property damage accident and we were getting some complaints about that to do something quickly. So there was a there was a lot of things happening in a short period of time, and we took control of the work, took control of the sequencing, working with the contractor, of course, on what it was going to cost. And that, that was the big change in, in what resulted in this cost. With that change also, it was a domino effect of, of additional roadway items that needed to be um, increased, as well as the erosion control with the additional rainfall. Thank you, that, that answers my question. And I'll just let you know, thanks to Google Maps, I was able to take a virtual drive down that highway last night and see exactly what you guys were talking about. Okay, I don't show any other uh, questions or comments. So uh, at this point, I'll have Doug call the roll. Commissioner O'Brien. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Commissioner Burke. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Blue. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Aye. Chair Van Aye. 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 Uh, Burke voted Thank aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke. I'm sorry. All right. That's okay. Uh, we'll now go to environmental matters. And uh, Jose, take us through take us items through 53 items through 56. Good afternoon, Chair, Commissioners, and members of the public. The group agenda items are as follows. Item 53 is an action item. This is the final EIR for the Central City Specific Plan. Item 54 is an action item. This is the final EIR for the Alameda Quarter Southern Terminus Gap Closure Project. Item 55 is an action item. This is the final EIR for the Madera 41 South Expressway. Item 56 is an action item. This is the final EIR for the State Route 241, State Route 91 Toll Express Lanes Connector Project. Staff recommends approval for agenda items 54, 55, and 56, well, excuse me, 53, 54, 55, and 56. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Have a motion. Commissioner Dunn moves approval uh, based on staff recommendation for items 53 through 56. Tavoloni makes a second. I have a motion by Commissioner Dunn and a second by Tavoloni. Is there any discussion from the public? Is there any, and seeing no uh, questions from commissioners, uh, Doug, please call the roll. Commissioner 
Commissioner O'Rourke. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Tabaloni. Aye. Chair Van Aye. Chair, the motion passed. Thank you. Uh, next, we have an information item on a program update of the Transit Intercity Rail Capital Program. Kevin. Thank you, Commissioner. Tab 57 is an information item. This item identifies changes to the awards for the Transit and Intercity Rail Capital Program and is the basis of future allocations for this program. No action is required at this time, but I would be happy to answer any questions that the Commission may have on this item. Anyone have any questions or comments on this item? I don't see any from the public. I don't see any from commissioners. So thank you, Kevin. Now we're going to uh, go to item 60, which is um, uh, is uh, the overcrossing uh, from Encino Avenue in the city of Los Angeles and Terry. Thank you, Chair. Commissioners, item number 60 is an informational item in response to questions raised by the commission at the March meeting. John Belinsky, Caltrans District 7 Director, is here to provide you with information on how the department will perform community outreach on options related to this project. Good afternoon, John. Go ahead, John. Oh, there we go, okay. Good afternoon, Chair and Commissioners. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to share this project with you. This has been in development for a number of years. This project consists of replacing the Encino Avenue pedestrian overcrossing over Route 101 in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, we've been working um, closely with the city over the past year and a half to identify alternatives to the replacement of this project. Um, the city and Caltrans staff have identified development of an alternative pedestrian path along city streets um, that would um, result in us being able to not have to replace um, this pedestrian overcrossing. However, the funds for those improvements on city streets would have to come from the city of Los Angeles. Um, the city has made a commitment to us that they would be able to respond um, whether or not they could provide those funds in June um, of this year. Given the COVID situation, um, I'm anticipating that it will be unlikely that they will be able to fund those improvements um, on the city streets. However, um, we have developed a robust uh, public outreach effort um, that will identify the two alternatives, one being the pedestrian overcrossing, the second being the route along the city streets. Um, we are proceeding with conducting outreach. We will have virtual public meetings. We have a number of a list of about 2,500 mailers um, that will go out to local residents. Um, we will be engaging the community groups as well as the advocacy groups um, to have those discussions. Um, and hopefully with the result of um, one or the other alternatives being selected, of course, contingent upon the city being able to, if that is the selected alternative, the city being able to fund their portion. Um, so that concludes my comments. I'm available for any questions. Commissioner Liu, you have a question for um, I, I think that, Director Belinsky. Uh, I think the director has, has covered my concerns. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? I don't see anything else. So thank you, uh, Director Belinsky. Uh, let's you. move to item 61. And we're going to do 61, 62, and 63 together. So. Uh, Kevin, Teresa, and Christina. Thank you, Commissioner. 
Tab 61 is an action item. This item proposes to delete the construction phase of the Raymer to Burnson and Seacliff siding projects from the Proposition 1B Intercity Rail Improvement Program for a combined total of $33,506,000. This item also proposes to program five new projects utilizing the funds from the two deleted projects as well as available uh, additional funds available within the program for a combined total of $34,971,000 in Proposition 1B Intercity Rail Improvement Funds. Uh, and with that, I can hand it off to Teresa for item 62. Thank you. Item 62 is an action item. This item proposes a project scope amendment for the goal line rail improvements between Sunrise Boulevard to downtown Folsom project in Sacramento County. This project was approved for 20.3 million from the Solutions for Congested Corridors program. It is part of the US uh, 50 multimodal corridor enhancement project nominated by Caltrans and SACOG. The implementing agency is SACRT. The scope of the project was to construct 1.7 miles of sidetrack to run a 15 minute service intervals from Sunrise Boulevard to downtown Folsom. SACRT proposes to amend the scope of the project to include the procurement of 20 low floor light rail vehicles, the conversion of 29 stations to accommodate the new low floor vehicles, and construct 0.53 miles of sidetrack. In order to achieve the proposed benefits of 15 minute service intervals, the new vehicles and station modifications are required. This was also the, this was always the intent by the nomination only, but the nomination only included the track improvements. Also through modeling, they identify more efficient track design that would achieve the same benefits of 15 minute service intervals by construction by constructing 0.53 miles of track instead of 1.7 miles. The project has funding for Proposition 1A, the Transit and Inner City Rail Capital Program, STP, and CMAC, as well as other federal and local programs. This scope amendment will align the scope for all programs that are funding this project. There is no change to the funding from Solutions for Congested Corridors or the benefits. This amendment will also approve the revised funding plan the schedule and amend the baseline agreement. SACOG and Caltrans concur with this request. Uh, that concludes for this item and I'll hand it over to Christine. Hello, TAP 63 is an action item to amend the local partnership formulaic program of projects. Specifically, the amendments will program 2 million of available formulaic funding for the SAM Trans Express Bus Pilot Project in San Mateo County for fiscal year 2019-20 and program 302,000 of available formulaic funding for the SC Metro Paratransit Vans Replacement Project in Santa Cruz County for fiscal year 2019-20. Approval of these amendments to the current program of projects would result in a total of 37 agencies receiving program funds for 102 projects, totaling 282.2 million. The remaining 1.8 million and 36 million is available for programming through June 30th, 2020 and June 30th, 2021, respectively. TAP 61, 62, and 63 are consistent with the program's guidelines and the adopted programs. Staff recommends your approval of these items as presented in the staff recommendations. Is there a motion? Commissioner Dunn uh, moves the items. Oh, Key thank you. Key uh, Kehoe seconds if you still need a second. Okay, uh, Commissioner Norton, did I hear you uh, give, a, give a motion? Yes, you did. Sorry, it okay. took me a minute to unmute. Okay, Commissioner Norton moves and Commissioner Kehoe second. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> uh, Doug, please call the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes, sir. Mr. Burke. Aye. Mr. Burke. Aye. Mr. Gordino. Aye. Mr. Gordino. Aye. Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Mr. Lou.
Chairman, I Aye. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go to item 64 through 67. Uh, Lori Waters will present those items. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Items 64 to 67 are all active transportation program action items. I'll start with item 64. This is an amendment to the 2019 active transportation program. On January 29th, 2019, the commission approved the small urban and rural component of the 2019 active transportation program, which included 14,046,000 in active transportation funding for the San Jose multi-purpose path in the city of Goleta. The city had requested 17,959,000. However, not enough programming capacity was available at the time of program adoption to award the full request. As a result of savings from lapsed and withdrawn projects, there is now enough programming capacity to fund the city of Goleta's original request. Therefore, commission staff proposes to amend the 2019 active transportation program, small urban and rural component to program an additional 3,913,000 in construction funds in fiscal year 2021-2022 for the City of Goleta's San Jose Multipurpose Path Project in Santa Barbara County. Tab 65 is an action item to adopt the 2021 Active Transportation Program Guidelines Metropolitan Planning Organization Competitive Component for the San Joaquin Council of Governments. The Commission adopted the statewide 2021 Active Transportation Program Guidelines at the March 25th, 2020 commission meeting. However, Senate Bill 99 allows the commission to adopt guidelines proposed by MPOs for administering their MPO competitive component of the ATP. The MPO guidelines must be consistent with the state guidelines, but they are allowed discretion in certain areas, such as asking for a supplemental call for projects and project selection criteria and weighting. SJCOG will hold a supplemental call for projects using a supplemental application. The supplemental application will include additional project selection criteria such as project readiness, project location, transit access, mixed land uses and development intensity, housing diversity and affordability. Commission staff has reviewed the San Joaquin Council of Governments guidelines and found them consistent with the statewide guidelines. Tab 66. Commissioners, this is an action item to consider the funding distribution change for the Slauson Blue Line Station intersection improvements project in Los Angeles County. The county proposes to move 200,000 in PSE funds currently programmed in fiscal year 2021 to construction programmed in 2021. This project will remain fully funded. And lastly, tab 67 is an action item cons to consider the funding distribution change for the city of Stockton's March Lane and East Bay Mud Bicycle and Pedestrian Path Connectivity Improvements Project. The city requests to move 82,000 in PA and ED funds and 235,000 in PSE funds, both currently programmed in fiscal year 1920 to construction in fiscal year 1920. This project remains fully funded. Staff recommends approving items 64 through 67. This is Commissioner Guardino. I move staff's recommendation for item 64. Second by Kehoe. All right, I have a, a motion and a second for items 64, 65, 66, and 67. Do I have any questions or comments from the general public? All right, seeing none, I, from the commission as well, I will ask Doug to call for the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Inman. Aye. Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Mr. Liu. Aye. Mr. Norton. Aye. Mr. Cavaloni. Aye. Chair Mike Aye. So the items are approved. Thank you. Uh, 
Item 68, 69, and 70. And John? Yes. Item 68, 69, and 70 will be taken together. Item 68 is an action item to allocate $1,160,000 for one shop minor project in District 9. This project is funded from savings in the district's minor program. Item 69 is an action item for shop construction allocations. With the changes noted on the change list for this item, this item will allocate $338,990,000 for 30 shop projects. And item 70 is an action item to allocate funding for 76 shop pre-construction phases totaling $73,541,000 for PNED, PSNE, and right-of-way support. Staff has reviewed these allocation requests and finds that they are consistent with the shop guidelines, as well as the commission adopted TAMP, and staff recommends approval of items 68, 69, and 70. Move. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Burke and a second by Commissioner Norton. Uh, are there any comments from the public? I don't see any commit comments from commissioners. Doug, please call the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Edmund. Aye. Commissioner Tio. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Mr. Norton. Aye. Mr. Tavaloni. Aye. Mr. Aye. Items are approved. Thank you. Now we'll go to item 71, okay. the Canyon Mr. Fires allocation. Commissioners, item number 71 is an action item requesting an allocation for an inverse condemnation settlement brought against the department resulting from the 2017 Canyon fires in Orange County. The request is for 7,241,600 for the settlement of individual plaintiffs property damage lawsuits. The commission previously approved a settlement at the December 2019 meeting to settle with insurance companies representing a portion of the claimants. Litigation related to the remaining Canyon fires plaintiffs is ongoing. Staff recommends commission approval. Commissioner Dunn moves approval. Commissioner Liu seconds. I have a motion by Commissioner Dunn and a second by Commissioner Liu. Are there any comments from the public? And I see no comments from commissioners. Doug, please call the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Mr. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Norton. Aye. Mr. Tabaloni. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Motion Thank you. Uh, item 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, and 78. Teresa. Commissioners, items 72 through 78 are STIP allocations. These are 13 STIP allocation request uh, for projects on the state highway system and off the state highway system. Um, 11 are locally administered projects. Uh, two of these are advancements for 7,498. One is an AB 3090 reimbursement for 2,312,000. One is the transit projects for, for 26,700,000. Staff has reviewed these requests and finds it consistent with the STIP guidelines and the program. Staff recommends you approve items 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, and 78. Commissioner Liu will move the item. Items, plural. Second. Second, Cavaloni. I have a motion by Commissioner Liu and a second by Commissioner Tabaloni. Are there any comments from the general public? And seeing no comments or questions from commissioners, Doug, please call the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. 
Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Cavalloni. Commissioner Cavalloni. Sorry, aye. Thank you. Chair Van Aye. Motion passed. Thank you. We'll now go to item 79 through 84. Uh, Kevin. Thank you, commissioners. Tab, um, tab 79 through 84 are action items, and I'll be taking them all together. Uh, tab 79 requests 1,600,000 for the San Luis Obispo layover expansion project within uh, the Proposition 1B Inner City Rail Improvement Program. Tab 80 requests 15,526,000 for the Narlin Bridge replacement project, also within the Proposition 1B Inner City Rail Improvement Program. Tab 81 is the annual allocation of 3,377,000 for the Waterborne Ferry Program for fiscal year 2021. This allocation is consistent with the amount in the proposed Budget Act of 2020 and will be contingent on the passage of the state budget. Tabs 82, 83, and 84 request to allocate funds from the Transit and Intercity Rail Capital Program. Tab 82 requests a combined 31,524,000 to five projects within the program. Please note that tab 82 has an item on the change list to fix project one's remaining programming balance, just a technical fix. Tab 83 requests 17,500,000 for the Northern California Corridor Enhancement Program Realignment Project, and tab 84 requests 6,474 for the LOSAN North Improvement Program. Staff have reviewed each request and found them to be consistent with their respective programs. Staff recommends approval of items 79 through 84. This is Kehoe, uh, move approval of the staff report. And this is Commissioner Guardino, I second the motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Kehoe and a second by Guardino. Is there <laughs> any public comment? Uh, I have a question on 83. Kevin, um, is, are there any particular um, difficulties on that corridor that would the the it just uh, seventeen million is always an eye popping number for an environmental document on item eighty three I'm sorry A, item eighty three the uh, EIR um, right. from Oakland to San Jose that that realignment is it, it, the, the environmental document is going to cost we've already spent about three million dollars on that but they're calling for another. $17 million on that. Is there a particular issue that is going to be particularly cantankerous or difficult to overcome on that one? Um, I believe that there is some complications as they've settled upon a location for a multimodal um, uh, facility, uh, sorry, a multimodal station uh, within the um, Nile subdivision route. Uh, that being said, as far as uh, particular difficulties, if Kyle Gridinger is on the line, he might be able to provide a bit more information on the status of the project. Yes, hello, I'm on the line. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, thank you. Um, I, I, will, I will try to figure out exactly uh, what those issues are, but uh, as, as uh, Kevin noted, this, uh, this does go through the route between Oakland and San Jose uh, through some low-lying uh, wetlands and, and uh, uh, salt flats, I believe. We'll confirm with the CCJPA uh, on what those particular issues are, uh, but I believe that that location geographically is driving some of these uh, environmental increases. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't see any other questions or comments. Doug, please call the roll. Mr. How long? Yes. Mr. Burke. Aye. Mr. Dunn. Aye. Mr. Gordino. Aye. Mr. Inman. Aye. Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Mr. Liu. Aye. Mr. Norton. Aye. Mr. Cavalloni. Aye. 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 All right. Um, now we'll move through items 85, 86, 87, and 88. And uh, Christine will lead us through those. Yes. Tab 85, 86, and 87 are action items for the local partnership program for allocation requests. 
tab 88 is an action item for a multi-funded from local partnership program and STIP program funding allocation request. I please note on the yellow replacement item for tab 88, there is an update to the project description to reflect a minor scope change, an increase to the output, and an increase of STIP funding. Staff has reviewed the request. The items are consistent with the local partnership program and the STIP program guidelines and the adopted program. Therefore, staff recommends your approval of tabs 85, 86, 87, and the noted changes for tab 88 reflected in the yellow replacement item. Cataloni moves. Mr. Rinman, second. I have a motion by Commissioner Tabaloni and a second by Commissioner Inman. Are there any questions or comments from the public? Any questions or comments from the commission? I see none. Doug, please call the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Gardino. Commissioner Gardino. Uh, aye. Thank you. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Tavaloni. Aye. Commissioner Van Kennenberg. Aye. Here the motion is approved. Thank you. Uh, items 89 uh, and 90 will be led by Hannah Walter. Good afternoon. Item 89 is an allocation request um, for 247 million for construction for the I-5 Golden State Choke Point Relief Project. In addition, um, LA Metro is requesting an additional 18 months for project delivery due to some design changes um, and is requesting a technical correction to the post miles for the project. Staff recommends approval of this allocation and these changes. Um, item 90 is a request for 5,992,000 for the Alameda Quarter Southern Terminus Gap Closure Project. Um, this is consistent with the guidelines and staff recommends approval of this allocation as well. This is Commissioner Alvarado, move staff's recommendation. This is Commissioner Liu, all second, and I do have a comment on 90. I have a motion by Commissioner Alvarado and a second by Commissioner Liu. Are there any comments from the public? Yes, we do. All right, Patricia Chen, you are now unmuted. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Von Kaninenberg and Commissioners. This is Patricia Chen with LA Metro. As the end of the fiscal year approaches, many projects are coming forward for allocation and we don't know the details of what the coming fiscal year will bring in terms of financial impacts, but there will surely be changes. The allocations made today and next month will play an important role in creating jobs and helping to restart the paused economy. We thank the Commission for their role in this, and we look forward to working with you through the COVID-19 recovery and onward. Thank you, Patricia. Any other comments from the public? Okay, Commissioner Liu, you had a comment on item 90. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, um, I am glad to see that our TSEP uh, funding is going toward improving on-dock rail at the Port of Los Angeles. Uh, it's gonna make uh, operations there more efficient, less polluting. Uh, I do need to note, however, that generally speaking, the public health and environmental benefits of on-dock rail are directly related to the type of locomotives that are used. And we have a local short haul company down at the Port of Los Angeles and Port of Long Beach, Pacific Harbor Line. And that company has agreed to test and perhaps eventually deploy some advanced technology locomotives. And so I would like to encourage our staff and Caltrans to work with them to see how and if uh, TSEP um, or another, uh, other programs might be of assistance with this effort. Thank you. Uh, Director Weiss. I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that we had received quite a few letters from uh, the public and from a number of uh, state and local officials about TAB 89, all in support of that. Okay. 
Are there any other questions or comments regarding 89 and 90? I will, we, I will ask uh, Doug to call the roll, please. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Dunn. Aye. Commissioner Gardino. Aye. Commissioner Hinman. Aye. Commissioner Keogh. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Tavaloni. Aye. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Great. Uh, we now have ATP allocations, uh, 91, 92, and 93. Lori Waters. Yes, commissioners, items 91 to 93 are all active transportation program allocations. Item 91 is to approve allocations of 20,181,000 for 21 active transportation program projects. Item 92 is to approve an allocation of 1,634,000 for the diesel horse to downtown non-motorized improvement project in Shasta County. And item 93 is an action item to approve an advance allocation of 95,000 for the pathway to play at Calway Park, Barton, Florence, Sidewalks Project in Fresno County programmed in fiscal year 2021. Staff has reviewed these requests. They're consistent with the ATP guidelines, the adopted programs, and the ATP policy on project amendments and advanced project allocations. So staff recommends your approval of items 91, 92, and 93. This is Commissioner Guardino. I uh, move the staff's recommendation for items 91. Through 93. Commissioner Norton seconds. Okay, I have a motion for to move staff approval for items 91, 92, and 93. Uh, are there any comments from the public? And I see no comments from the commission. Doug, please call the roll. Mr. Yes. Mr. Burke. Aye. Mr. Dunn. Aye. Mr. Bardino. Aye. Mr. Hinman. Aye. Mr. Tito. Aye. Mr. Liu. Aye. Mr. Norton. Aye. Mr. Tavaloni. Aye. Everybody can have it. Aye. Sure, the motion is approved. Thank you. We now have some time extension requests, and staff, if you'll lead us through item 94 through 102. Uh, commissioners, uh, this is Chris Johnson. I just want to give a quick personal note. Uh, this is my last meeting working with the California Transportation Commission, and I just really wanted to thank the commission and commission staff, and in particular, Mitch, Terry, and John for giving me an opportunity to work with the California Transportation Commission. I really learned a lot and have a much better insight into how the commission and Caltrans work collaboratively together. That said, uh, commissioners, tabs 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, and 102 are departmental action items for time extensions related to project allocations, contract award, project completion, and project expenditures for the shop SB1, LPP, SIP, and ATP programs. Also, please note the modifications on the change list for items 94, 96, and 97. If the commissioners want to discuss any of these time extensions, commission staff is available for any questions related to these time extensions. Hearing none. Uh, Do, I have a motion? You... Do I have a oh. motion? I move. Motion. <laughs> okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Inman and a second by Commissioner Burke. Are there any comments from the public on this item? These items, excuse me. And I see no questions or comments from the commission, so I'll ask Doug to please call the roll. Mr. Yes. Mr. Burke. Aye. Mr. Dunn. Aye. Mr. Gordino. Aye. Mr. Hinman. Aye. 
Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Mr. Liu. Aye. Mr. Norton. Aye. Mr. Tavaloni. Aye. Mr. Reconover. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you. We'll now move to the public comment portion of our meeting. Staff, do we have any members of the public who wish to make a comment? Yes, I have uh, one written comment. Zach RT would like to thank Caltrans, SACOG, CALSA, and most importantly, CT staff in working with the region's transportation agencies in ensuring that we are able to deliver the Gold Line project and ensure transportation access, public health delivery, and congestion relief to our communities here in Sacramento. Thank you for approving item 62. Thank you. Any other item, any other members of the public who wish to speak? All right. At this time, um, we've lost three members of uh, the California community who were, um, who made investments in our, in our uh, transportation system. And I'd like to call on um, Commissioner Liu to, um, and, and Commissioner Keogh and Commissioner Inman uh, to make us short uh, comments on three different individuals. So, Commissioner Liu, if you could uh, speak to S. David Friedman. Yes, and, and is, uh, we lost uh, S. David Freeman uh, last night. He uh, led a, a, a very long and productive life of 94 years. He served mm -hmm. some of that time as the uh, chair of the Port of Los Angeles Board of Harbor Commissioners doing an outstanding job of moving the clean air action, the initial clean air action plan forward and helping to make the Port of Los Angeles what it is today. And I would uh, incorporate uh, my, my request uh, to, uh, that we adjourn in, uh, in part in his honor and in, in the honor of the other two people we lost. Thank you, Commissioner Liu. Commissioner Kehoe will now speak about Paul Yablonski. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, I'd like to ask the commission to adjourn in memory of Paul Jablonski. Uh, Paul was a longtime uh, transit advocate in San Diego. He began his transit career 40 years ago as a bus driver. Uh, the last 16 years are at uh, the Metropolitan Transit System here in San Diego, where he was a strong advocate for adequate funding and uh, expanding the bus and trolley system. Uh, so he will be missed. It was a, a sudden death, and uh, you know we will have uh, big shoes to fill in San Diego. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner Inman will now speak about Tim Shaw. Thank you, Chair von Kanenberg. So sadly, we did lose several members of our extended transportation. Uh, family since the last time we met. And I would like to honor Tim Schott. Tim was a second generation icon in Sacramento. Uh, he was the owner of Schott and Associates, but most of us knew him from his 20 years of leadership of the California Association of Port Authorities. He stepped back from that role about a year and a half ago uh, and had moved to Alaska. Um, but he passed away very suddenly, and those of us that work uh, in the system of systems, the goods movement sector, uh, really enjoyed having Tim as a colleague and a friend. Thank you, Commissioner Inman. So we close this meeting today in honor of Tim Schott, Paul Jablonski, and S. David Friedman. We thank them for their contributions to making California great. I now adjourn this meeting. Be safe, be well.